Hey everybody, it's Liz out at Northern Bell Farms. Long time no see. Um, I figured since it has been a while that we would walk around out back here and I will show you this huge problem that we've had every year for about the past three years and I've tried pretty much everything in the book that they say to try. So, but I wanted to show you all a uh, telltale sign for it and the new baby animals and what's going on. Since it's been a while. So come on, let's go. And so I went to rewatch the video. It's been so long that I forgot how to record a video, obviously. Sorry about the small picture, but if it's up to me to record another video, I of course don't have time for that. So here is your extremely small frame video. This is a telltale sign of a vine borer. This is why we stopped growing squash. I used a half a bag of DE over here. Look, and there it is. Oh, I think I dropped it on the duck. This is the DE, or diatomaceous earth. Um, it's supposed to protect against um, all the vine borers, but I guess, I don't know. I used most of the bag, actually. Probably three pounds. And just over here in this section right here. And I pulled two squash, three squash... This is why we don't even bother with squash normally. I really wanted it this year, and I seen other people had it, and I was like, oh, yeah, I want some. But I don't know why I even bother. It's just like a waste of seeds, a waste of time, a waste of space. One, two squash, three squash, four, five... I hope you can see. Six, seven. Eight. That one's got one nine ten ten squash with vine borers. No idea how to combat it. I sprinkled the E a week or two ago all around each of them. And we have ten squash that have them and one, two, three, four, six squash that we have left, which I'm sure within the next week we'll have vine borers. The first couple years we had squash, it was great. And then they came in, and now they've never left. So, I don't know how to stop them. I've tried everything that people say to try. I even tried the DE again, even though I've done it before. And it didn't work then. It didn't work now. Um, I think the only way to do it is to be proactive, probably, and get them... I don't know, maybe neem the plant... Probably name the plant every, you know, once a week while it's small before it grows that big. Our cucumbers are doing okay so far, and I don't see anything on them. So, hopefully that means that these will not have those green bugs. We get these green worms in the cucumbers every year. I'm really hoping those won't be there this year. But we shall see. The baby ducks are getting big. Oh, here's my rose lilies. 
Isn't that pretty? Some caterpillar or something's eating some of them, though. But they're really pretty when they do bloom. Here's the baby ducks. They look a lot like the big ducks now. They don't look so baby anymore. Uh, within the next couple weeks, we're going to... I have to have Fawn help me. We're going to make a circle here in the middle and save these plants that are here. I'm going to leave this. It'll be kind of like a keyhole. Um, so when you walk into the garden, it'll be this walkway. And then it'll be a circle in the middle of the pens that comes back. So that'll be flowers. And then... I'm going to open that duck side up once they have their babies and have them come into here and I'll set up in here for them um, and then probably move the mamas and the babies over here and have them all mingle and then um, make this one run. I'll probably leave that fence up though so that way I can reseed over there because it's looking pretty rough and they need some new greenery. But the baby ducks are getting big. My potatoes are a huge fail. Um, they were doing great until I mounded more. And then they looked like crap. So I'm thinking I probably never should have mounded stuff on them. Because um, they were good till that point. But now they're looking really bad. Like mostly dead. And the ones out front, which I didn't mound, just the one time originally, look great still. So, I compared the two, and I should not have mounded, is what I got out of that. Here's the baby bunnies. Hi, baby bunnies. There's two more sleeping. Over there, there's six babies, I think. Four, five, six, yeah. Even the baby chicks, they've all moved off the back porch from the brooder. And they're all in here now. I have to start separating them out and figure out who's going where and what pen. But they're all in there. Just bathing it up and enjoying being together. Odin is enjoying. He likes to go in there and hang out with them. Odin's enjoying getting dirty along with Freya who's over there turning on the hose. Making it all muddy for the babies. And Valerie is over there hiding. Trying to get into the baby duck pen. <laughs> We have three, possibly four broody hens. Um, there's two in the big coop. Uh, one is trying to be in the front coop, but I keep stealing all her eggs. And then the black silky, who likes to be a mom every year, is also being broody. So they each have about three eggs under them because we don't need any more chickens. But um, it's a lot quicker if you just let them go through their cycle of hatching out eggs and I mean it's three so um it's getting really hot here during the day so I need to make sure that I keep up with the water and this was our last broody she that moved over here to this broody apartment over with the bunnies that one was trying to be broody I moved her over here with some duck eggs and she wasn't having it but this one hatched out those baby ducks who keep trying to snuggle with that bunny over there that bunny squeezes through the fence and comes between that side that he's on and this side and the ducks keep chasing him from side to side so they can snuggle him but those four baby ducks are this chicken's babies she hatched them out she had five eggs and only one didn't hatch did a good job. You can't get to your babies. They'll come back. The cochins. 
Coach and babies are getting bigger. Those are all our coach and babies we hatched out. We put them in here with the bigger coachins. The co new coach and rooster is awful rough on his ladies. See that one right there closest to us with the naked neck? Too often, new roosters don't know what they're doing. And so they are sometimes a little more rough. And lots of people like to like get rid of them right away because they think they're hurting the hens. And I mean, as your hens may have bald spots on from the top of their heads to like their shoulder blade area. Um, even sometimes uh, our Duke, if he finds a favorite, um, she'll get uh, all of her feathers around her tail feather missing. Um, but a lot of times they just think, don't know how to do it yet and they're trying to figure it out for themselves is all that is. We have our first couple blushing tomatoes too. This one's obviously for us because it's got this little rot spot. Um, and actually a lot of our tomatoes we've already had to pull off because the chickens get out and munch on them. Like that one over there. That's blushing actually. That one. Chickens have eaten. And there's another one over here that looked really nice. It's probably this big one down here. Nope. Oh, maybe. Yeah, see? The chickens have come over and pecked a hole in it. So, lower tomatoes are in danger of getting eaten by chickens. Back here, anyways. And they don't grow. And for some reason, our tomatoes don't do well out front. All the ones that I've planted are really struggling. Most of them are dead, more than half of them. And, uh... Yeah, so I had made a really personal video. Uh, I may still put it up, but it was just about how I haven't been around here very much, and I do miss you all, and it's not by choice that I haven't been around. Uh, I really would like to be around here more often, make more videos, because that's what I really enjoy doing is... Being out in the garden and sharing it with people. Circumstances have made that harder recently. Um, as I said, I may, I've watched the video that I made that was really personal three or four times. And I'm still unsure if I want to share. Um, I may because although I do have a few followers, it's basically only the same 30 people who watch the videos. So thank you guys for being there and caring enough. Um, to be involved and but I'm not sure if I want to put it all out there for the whole internet and world to see even though it shouldn't really matter because it shouldn't really matter there is a lot of new changes we have to move a whole coop this whole coop back here has to move out front um, so we're going to be really busy I'm trying to disconnect the pens and attempting to slide the coop with the car. So maybe we should film that because it might be pretty amusing or devastating. It might just fall apart when we hook it up to go to drag it. It might just snap into pieces. So either way, we'll probably film that. Um, but I wanted to thank you all for being there and being supportive. And I had a garden walk uh, that I filmed last, like, two weeks ago. And then I was supposed to add in a fertilizing part, and I accidentally deleted that part. So I never added the garden walk, so we'll definitely have to do a garden walk within the next couple days. But I just wanted to throw this quick backyard chickenness out there and say sorry I haven't been around. It's not by choice. Don't conform. Be transformed. Till the next one, guys. See ya.